So I've been on a binge of Corridor Crew videos. For all of you that don't know, it's a YouTube channel that does several analytical and technical videos focusing on film. One of their most popular series is them, knowledgeable VFX artists who react to good and bad CGI in film. It made me research about several aspects of film and is a genuinely entertaining show. The tough pill to swallow for me being a fan of Hindi cinema has been that we are far from being at the same level technically when it comes to scale and technology. Strides that were taken by international cinema in the 80s is something that we are getting introduced to in the 21st century. It reminds me of an interview of Amir Khan regarding why Bollywood cannot make a movie like Inception. Hollywood is far ahead in its freedom to pick topics which are bizarre sometimes and you know you know unimaginable topics is what they pick up right dream within a dream within a dream True. And, you know how to convey that and connect with people and you know make them believe that this right. is actually happening they are able to do anything that they imagine right and we are not able to imagine only correct so first we have to imagine we have to be free enough to imagine things right which are amazing and which are you know and then we can try and get there to execute it. I mean, leave aside the sci-fi or fantasy genre, more or less animation feature films in Hindi cinema are now a part of history, something that only kids experience between 2005 and 2015 primarily. While I do criticize our lack of strides taken technically in the industry, you know what's one of the most technically brilliant films that failed from a storytelling point of view? It's Shah Rukh Khan Zero. No matter how much you diss that film for losing its focus in the second half, the strides it took technically is something that is marveled that by several international forums as well. Irrespective, the sad reality also is that the failure of films like Zero also will compel actors like Shah Rukh and other big stars to maybe not push the envelope too much because of the financial risk that comes with it. Hence, so-called safe subjects will thrive even for a few more years to come. This video will be focusing on several sequences from film that shocked audiences on why they were greenlit to be placed in the final edit of films. So here is Trident Refuse Productions with six embarrassing Indian movie special effects that made audiences cringe. Kalank One of the most anticipated but disappointing films was the ambitious venture called Kalank. While its problems will be addressed, it had a lot going for it. I mean, you had beautiful sets, a humongous scale, a chart-busting soundtrack, a song lo-fi artists can play on loop so that real stars can become famous. But in hindsight, as Karan Johar himself states, the visual appeal became more of a priority than the significance of the story and the timeline in which it was set. The film went in several directions that led to its core getting lost in the smog. One of these directions includes Zafar showing off his bull riding skills to a wannabe coliseum called Kalam Valley. The sequence existed only to showcase the brute strength of Zafar, not lending anything to the storyline or even the subplot with Roop. The execution of it was lackluster to say the least. The computer-generated bull did not contribute to develop a sense of fear within the audience, being superimposed into the real world while clearly standing out as a product from the VFX department. This one was unnecessary and shabbily executed. A Flying Jut you know, we have been asking or at least I have been wondering why we can't have our own universe of Indian superheroes. While Krish seems to be our only saviour, attempts like Bhavesh Joshi and Mart Ko Dard Nahi Hota have been praiseworthy. Sadly, these unique and innovative films have not received love from the audience. Hence, producers are hesitant to take the risk with such projects. One of the unintentionally funny attempts at creating a superhero film was a flying jut starring Tiger Shroff. With the same sensibilities of old superhero comics, gimmicky and over the top. But the movies and audiences have evolved. Just think of it, Joker became the menacing villain that he was because he fell into toxic waste in the comics. The Joaquin Phoenix Joker, however, was a product of abuse and societal subjugation. You see the progress? In Flying Jut, contact with the tree or toxic waste appears and superpowers are gained. The movie is very archaic with its visual effects as well, especially its final action sequence, which takes place on the moon out of nowhere. You know, Tiger Shroff is an ideal protagonist for a no-nonsense action film. He's young, he's agile and physically capable. He more than compensates for his limited acting range. It's just the Bollywood drama packaging that ruins a lot of his effort. Race 2 
the only takeaway that i see whenever people remember the race franchise is that saif ali khan as ranveer singh is an extremely cool protagonist other than that it is the convoluted stereotypes that exist in the abbas mastan world basically characters going main janta hu tune murder kiya hai and then the other character going main janta hu tum jante ho ki maine murder kiya hai and then the supposed murdered person appears and goes haha murder to hua hi nahi hai <laughs> irrespective i don't think anyone will deny that race 2 was quite the come down after race 1 The third one is something that we just don't discuss. Out of all the over the top sequences, I think what takes the cake is Seth jumping out of a plane about to crash in a car with Deepika Padukone that shoot four parachutes to take them to safety. Fast and the Furious kar sakte hain to hum kyun nahi? That doesn't take away from the fact that it is cartoonish and quite dumb. Welcome back. Probably one of the worst sequels of the last decade has to be the Anis Bazmi directed film Welcome Back. I mean if you want lessons on how to ruin a hilarious franchise Welcome Back it is. I mean casting John Abraham in a comedic role that Akshay Kumar made famous it already takes away what made the first film so special. Secondly the deterioration of the writing really made me sad as I watched this painful film in 2015. I mean even if I incorporate the suspension of disbelief while watching something like this there was little effort made by the creators even when it comes to the sets of the film the movie is not even shot in real locations mostly in front of green screens that are transformed into palatial mansions not to forget to see veterans like nasruddin shah and dimple kapadia ham their way through a movie is another atrocity altogether lastly john ibrahim playing stapu over camels may be the last straw of patience i had drive A complete waste of a talent like Sushant Singh Rajput was a 2019 film Drive directed by Tarun Mansukhani a film that was consecutively delayed and went into the back burner of Dharma Productions only to be directly released on Netflix The film was terribly edited but moreover was shabbily executed regarding its special effects designed as a heist film the one aspect that should have been its strongest quality came across as the most jarring the car chase sequences rather than replicating the beautiful visuals of a movie like the fast and the furious especially the first one it more or less came across as playing hot wheels on your playstation 1 the film was not only all over the place from a storytelling point of view but a tough watch visually due to its embarrassing visual effects radhe if you didn't know i have finally recovered from radhe 19 and it's been more than a week don't worry but i'm fine it was tough but a speedy recovery nonetheless Despite whatever has been said about Radhe and the atrocity that it was it made me think about one thing about the industry which is this obsession with vanity and fighting the natural aging process the industry is so obsessed with looking aspirational and perfect on screen that our aging actors feel compelled to look like greek gods all the time especially when it is a commercial project There's a joke in a terrible movie like Happy Ending where Govinda in order to be more relevant gets a plastic surgery to get abs on his body. Similarly, I don't know why but because of his history maybe every Salman movie needs to have a scene where he takes off his shirt. I don't know whether the creators think the Indian audience is dumb but the sequence in Radhe where Disha swoons over Radhe's bare chest it was so clearly visible that Salman's body has been digitally enhanced to look ripped in some way. There was a similar controversy that had happened with Ekta Tiger and the VFX department that had showcased a video which had enhanced Salman's body. This obsession is now seen with ads as well. Kartik Aryan sporting abs which I assume have been digitally enhanced. I mean, are we kidding over here? I think with Radhe's example, Salman should know that bhai fans will love him and stay loyal irrespective of his body type. When it comes to being ripped in general, I would just like to say that don't sell a false dream as if you worked hard for something that simply doesn't exist. It sets a bad precedent and an over the top aesthetic standard that is toxic for a population. And that was a video guys. Write down in the comments below whether you have some video ideas for our channel. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle is right in front of you. Follow me at Jamie Pants for. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.